I partook in a delivery hands on. I just got my first baby. I was seeing everything in real time. I could not believe it. Those things, I never read them again. See your pros. Can you forget an image of your life, baby? I didn't know that it was possible for somebody to actually put it down more confidently. Without doing past questions. Practice, 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 practice. Practice, 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 practice. The children do not like it. Because all times do not like it. Don't let them see it. Though. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I haven't had a sit down video in the longest time. And I'm grateful to be back here. I'm grateful to to do this again. <laughs> I left you guys on Instagram and TikTok. Sorry. So today's video is titled How I Got Distinctions in Pediatrics and OBGY and that's obstetrics and gynecology. <sighs> I've been procrastinating this video because I'm the shyest person on the planet. If you want to see this video, in the next video, um, we'll be talking about pediatrics. First of all, ONG is a specialty of medicine that deals with uh, female reproductive tracts and pregnant women. I feel like personally, it's it's the easier half. It is the kinder stepsister of the two. And when I say the two, I mean ONG and pediatrics. Pediatrics is something else entirely different from ONG. ONG is the posting that you can actually enjoy because the stress is not as much as in pediatrics. At least that was how it was in my own school. It's not as broad as a lot of the other courses we do. That is pediatrics, medicine, and surgery. Other people may beg to differ. Everybody has their own opinion and really see, but I feel like it's not as broad. So it's that post thing that you can actually get a distinction in. First of all, I like to say that you should actually be hands on. Try as much as possible to get as much hands on experience as you can. Go to school, especially clinicals, attend the clinical activities. It is very, very important. And it is important because I know a lot of things that I learned just by being in school. Doctors say these things all the time. When you see cases in the emergency, when you see cases in the wards and then you see being managed, that is the best way to learn. That is actually the truth. It's just that <sighs> we are tired. We'll go through a lot. But they are right. Because I remember that I took part in a delivery and I was hands on. I was literally the one that delivered that baby. I school at Luth, but we go to Rando General Hospital and we go to Lagos uh, Maternity Hospital to see more deliveries because we don't get to see a lot of that in our own tertiary facility most of our cases are complicated cases that will need to see section so we had to go there to see deliveries and so i partook in a delivery hands-on i just got my first baby <laughs> and i did it with the nurse um by my side she was assisting and supervising and so there's some concepts that i learned during that process that I can't forget. Like, I remember signs of placenta separation, lengthening of the cord, suddenly gush of fluid. My system of labor used to sort of confuse me. Like, how the baby goes from flexion to internal rotation to external rotation to restitution. That whole thing that happens to a baby when the baby's coming out of the uterus. That thing used to sort of confuse me. When I delivered the baby, I saw it. I saw the baby actually turn and I was like, oh my God, this is actually what they explain. So sometimes when I'm trying to remember the mechanism of labor, I just remember seeing the baby live baby how can you forget an image of a live baby it's not something that's very easy to just forget i was seeing everything in real time i could not believe it those things i never read them again till pros i remember in a &E, when somebody came in the placenta brochure two white ball cannulas abcd everything they were doing i remembered it because i was there the way our professional exams are structured we are structured to manage cases even our MCQs are structured in such a way that there are cases that you're supposed to manage. I remember my essay on obstructive labor. I, I didn't know how to manage because I didn't read obstructive labor when I was going for my first end of person exam. The case that they painted for me to manage, I had seen that case. I had sort of seen it before. Something very similar to it. And I used exactly what they did there. <laughs> I'm not even joking. But exactly what happened in Randall was what I, that was what I wrote down in that exam. Because I did not actually read it. I literally skipped that topic. I went on to other topics that I thought were more important. Help you in the exam. And it can even help you in real life when you're a doctor. There's this book called The Guide. If you're an Nigerian medical student, go and buy that book. Right? Either The Guide or Principles, right? Textbook recommendations. Um, for us, they recommended 10 teachers. Um, I had both the obstetrics and the gynecology. Also recommended the textbook of ONG for medical students. I read that textbook as well. I read, in fact, I read, I tried to read books as much as I could because 
Our lecturers were always encouraging us to try read textbooks. So textbooks was a bit bulky for me, but I had the PDF on my laptop too. I used to read and I used to try to go through it as much as possible. But then they would tell us that we should try to read a more Nigerian textbook that some of our professors even um, contributed to. Some of them were even the authors of the textbook. They were the co-authors of the textbook. Try to read a few chapters and... Reading the chapters gave me a bit more knowledge, but it also helped to solidify what I was seeing in my class. I'm not saying that you must finish your to come. I didn't finish it. I tried to read this textbook as much as I could. I tried to read some chapters, just tried to go through it, just so that I can get like a broader knowledge of what was being taught. But what really helped me uh, with the distinction is this guy. Well, the jurors do not like it. Because all times do not like it. Don't let them see it. I say, there is a right, I don't need to go and do that. When you're going to clock patients at the ward or at the clinic, take the textbook with take the book with you and use it as a guide to clock. But remember to always cross check with the information that your lecturer gave you. The principles are generally the same, but the figures may be slightly different. I'll show you mine and I'll show you that it, I did I wish a lot of corrections in my own guide. There are different schools of thought. So the way your lecturer follows says this particular value is the value. You can go and then use your slide to adjust certain things in the Book. When it comes to taking history, performing examination, the book is really, really good because to guide you, to ask you what to ask for. And then when your lecturer is correct, at least you're correcting from a point of um, of knowledge. You already have some knowledge of what you're talking about. So I carry that guide everywhere. So when I was preparing for my end of books, things, after reading my slides and I'm going through the guide because I wanted it to solidify what I read before. And I also wanted to learn how to take a history. How do I take a history of a patient upon this condition? How do I examine what are the things I'm looking out for? I use the book. I read all my slides because I tried to finish all my slides. And then I went through the guide. So while I'm reading, going through the guide and I'm reading about the history and I'm also reading about the brief notes that they're writing about each topic. Because sometimes you can see some of some things that I know in your slide that may actually be important. It has a way of, of noting down some things that are important to students. That was how I actually prepared for my end of posting it up and end of posting contributing look at it so you kind of marry your slide and get it and it's a small book so you can actually finish it i think i finished this book twice because i read the first book about one side no the second one i'm not sure i finished but i finished this book so i think you can actually finish it reading method yeah what reading method did i use but oh and i didn't really judge things obviously when you go to clinic when you go for your clinic class judge to judge things i mean like reading and writing no i just read i just kept reading and reading try to teach myself because the way i always read is to teach myself i would sit down with the book and i would talk to myself about it sit down look at this book and then teach myself about it keep trying to say this is how it works okay placenta preview is when the placenta is should matter to any method you use that drives the information in just try and identify that method and stick to it from the beginning that's when i read for so i read for it like it's about 100 you want to read everything you want to touch everything so at the end of your posting exam you should have completed and read everything in one inch. All these things I'm telling you that I finished this guide cover to cover. It was before my end of course, I finished it. I didn't want a situation where I didn't know I'm going to the exam and I'm not, I've not heard of something. I didn't read obstructed labor and normal labor. Even normal labor, I glanced you, but I was thinking about I just didn't read it. I don't know why I skipped and that was what came out. So try to read as much as possible everything because it's not like you're not saying that when you get to prose, that's when you want to start reading. When you get to prose, what happens is new things start coming up things that you do not even know that they are part of your curriculum you've never heard of them before and somehow you're expected to know them before you get to the, into the exam they just start coming up this is for things that maybe you're not able to learn properly you start revising those things okay you learn everything you want to learn as much as possible before you end up posting an exam you read everything up try and try to finish that is the standard that's the goal if you don't get there okay but that is your goal so now during prose, you're, you're doing a revision. During prose, not time you start learning something. The things you're learning during prose should be very minimal. That you're learning from the first time should be very minimal. During many, you should be revising things that you have already read. The rate of prose is different. Now, school, we do OSCE in prose. So everybody knows OSCE carries the highest marks. So your obstetric examinations, your gynecological examinations, you need to learn those ones by heart. You do obstetric examination in four minutes. That's the whole, everything. Palpating the stomach and everything. You're doing it in four minutes you time yourself and then you practice everything everything must be spinal level you will know how to do everything by heart and it's only comes by practice 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 you want to take in a history you must practice ask questions you simulate cases oh it's best it came to david lower abdominal pain let's come to with infertility you know how to collect infertility from here to do ask the relevant questions and you ask questions do you know, so people go to the exam 
Tell us about perspective. I heard this thing recently. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Are you serious? I didn't know that it was possible for somebody to achieve this more confidently. Without doing past questions. I need that confidence. So the past questions, so nobody's in that they bring that word forward. One, it helps you to know how the lecturer sets questions. So it helps you know the areas that they like. Because it's not a big part of your books that the lecturer likes to set questions. There are areas that lecturers like. But sometimes doing past questions, it may not be that question. But they ask you around it again. It helps with revision. You know, I need to revise. Join a study group. The first time I ever joined a study group was in 500. I'm like, why did I never do this? And I remember that in 200 and 300, I was actually in tutorials. So maybe that's why it was sort of like a study group when they are teaching me. <laughs> because I was in tutorials in 200 and 300, I didn't have the time for study group. But study groups help a lot. You know, study what do we used to do? We start with essays, people are assigned different topics. Everybody's supposed to actually read around the topic, but then one person presents and then answers a question, maybe an essay question that was set on that topic and answers it. And then maybe other possible essay questions that are around that topic and try to do as many questions as we see. And then in study groups, also you can have examination partners. So you may not be able to practice examination in your room. Maybe your roommate is not the kind of person that likes you touching her or something. Your study group members are there for you. Everybody's time, practicing examinations, iron sharpness, iron from different units in the same posting. Maybe you're in ONG, somebody is in the REF, REF in our schools for fertility, someone's in OPS, those ones deal with them, cancers and malignancies. So everybody comes together with their own different knowledge and their own, what they've learned from their different consultants and then they can tell you, okay, this consultant likes this particular thing or this consultant does not like this thing. Or, okay, I think somebody taught us that that's not how to do it. Or, We're told here, everybody contributes to everybody's success because it makes you remember, you cannot afford to be an island. I'm sure I've emphasized this a lot of times in my other videos pray you guys i don't know prayer is a very important part of my my education and my academic anything because a lot of things that happen in the exam are not normal <laughs> i'm very serious and i'm going to tell you something that happened to me so during my oski there are stations between some questions right so you do a question here next one is the rest and in the rest station there's usually a chair there for you to sit down i did the first station and then the next station i saw a chair and i didn't see any question around it was in front of a room so I sat down on that chair and I was looking. We had four minutes for each question. So I was looking, I was just there chilling. And then the senior registrar came and said, ah, what are you doing here? You don't have a question. I'm like, no, no, this rest. He just shouted. He's like, what? Who told you this rest? Who put this chair here? This is not rest. And I'm like, what? I had spent at least two minutes out of the four minutes. The question is inside. What? Is it a joke or something? When I got to the question, come and see the question. But I sent up with a long story and then like 10 questions on the oh, I was just like oh my god I had to rush away to read them so I tried picking the keywords tried to share what I could share there were like 10 or 15 questions after that question I would have missed it like that or I would have misnumbered or something simply because I missed a station and because somebody put a chair there I don't even know who put that chair okay one thing that senior registrar had not worked in at that time I would have literally missed that station. I would have cried and that was my second station so that would have stabilized me throughout the exam. When I tell you that things that happen in the exam sometimes they are not normal. Though. So I always pray and I always call my mom to pray for me. I call my dad to pray for me. Everybody. I can pray for me. Please pray for me because hmm, so go and write an exam and come out. It's not an easy. Then on the exam day, everybody should come properly dressed, come with all your tools, try to sleep before the exam so you can actually remember when you're writing, write legibly. Thank you guys for watching. I hope these tips help you in some way or at least contribute to your success and I'm rooting for each and every one of as well and I pray God sees you guys through and if I remember any tips I'm going to put them in the comment section also if you have any tips you can also put them in the comment section so the other viewers can benefit from your tips please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like this video don't forget to share it to someone that you feel needs the video till next time guys bye <laughs> Uh, 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 uh.